Here it comes, live from the studio in the middle of nowhere, it's the Echoes of New Eden Podcast. Welcome your hosts, Rambo and Roseline. There you go, Roseline. That's how I'm going to pronounce your name from now on, since you're like making fun of me. I love it. <laughs> Such a cheap edit temporarily what's up everybody um yes welcome to echoes of new eden with uh your host rambo and then also guest host this week we have rockin ramblin rosalind with us thank you for having me uh it's it's uh i'm always bummed not to see uh mr rick around but uh i'll try to fill the shoes tonight (laughs) Yeah, he he just um, he's too good for us, so he decided to um, hang out with the guys instead of us. So it's whatever. I mean, he can do that. There. <laughs> so I yeah, he must be at a Star Trek convention or something. Something like that. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, thank you for subbing in for him. And uh, man, we got quite the show. We have this this uh, this latest update that like dropped on us like nobody knew anything about it and then all of a sudden just a couple hours before it actually dropped we're we're getting patch notes or like this update notes and we're kind of just like scratching our heads like where did this stuff come from and i know a lot of content creators are like uh we didn't hear anything about this (laughs) what event we don't know anything about this event so we'd be talking about that um yeah then i think that was quite the it was quite the list of patch notes. We got a lot of stuff to discuss about that. I didn't get much time to mess with the event. So, Razan, I'm hoping that you got some time in the event and uh, can talk a little bit about it. And maybe later, too, we'll get some more people to talk about what to do in that event. I'm hearing people are dropping capitals and it's not fun. And I, I don't know, just a bunch of different opinions, I guess, on this event. And then... um as well as the big news of the uh, the war that's going on, uh, the Philly Coalition and Genesis. And as of a couple hours ago, big-named corporations within Genesis have been leaving. So there's official Reddit posts, um, announcements stating that they are departing and doing their own thing. So we'll talk about a little bit of that. And, that, and I have a list of um, corporations that I've left. And it's like 10 corps. So it, it's not you know, a a small change. It's big things are happening right now with that state of the war. So, and also I got some numbers too, as far as uh, total damages and citadels down and whatnot. So we'd be talking about that. Does that sound fun, Rosalind? Oh, heck yeah. (laughs) I want to hear the latest numbers. Uh, I saw some last week that were massive. We'll see how it's going. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that. So getting into the announcements and actually my page is still loading. (laughs) I'm on my hotspot again. And um, okay, so here we go. We got an announcement um, on the 24th. Breaking news. Wow. An unknown constellation has been detected in New Eden. The four factions and the pirates are sending their fleets to explore. All pilots are welcome to sign up. Completing the missions issued by each faction will earn you a large number of interstellar tokens. Yay, another currency. (laughs) <laughs> which can be exchanged for rare items in new eden so this event one more currency to add to the list uh supposedly it's temporary though so we're going to do as much as we can yes uh, and, you know while it's around so the event duration was april 28th so today and this will go through till may 12th so things you need for this is to be tech 4 uh, to be located in a station or outpost, and to be not in a fleet. So you go into this exploration system, you need to collect data in the data signal location. But be careful, someone is watching you from the shadows. It's GRA. In the development system, you need to have the highest level of the station to destroy the hidden sleeper base. Hmm... Yeah, this was just dropped on us, and we had no idea anything about it. <laughs> yeah, no, no updates, no, no hints, maybe no hints, nothing. For the, uh, now, I do have creators to talk about how it works. right, and I do have a little bit more info on that. We'll talk about this probably after the announcements here. And 
So, the Verge of Silence event, and this is the event, I know there's another one, I can't think of it, I don't have the game in front of me, um, but there's a little tab for another event that's right under it, I forget the name of what that was called. Interstellar? <laughs> My wife in the background. <laughs> interstellar that's, that's something? That's right, we do have the Interstellar manual, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that. And so um, they had this announcements about this exploration to execute missions and any damage encountered in the event will not affect your live ship assets. So feel free to participate. And I did click into this and I was actually seeing um, there's a couple different options you can do. You can go like the safe route and you can go, what is it, like a dangerous route? Um, That's right. That's right. The, <laughs> yeah, uh... I can't read the screenshot. It's too small. Both of the dangerous and the safe side are kind of like faction war games in that uh, you can go in there with a ship, but uh, if you blow it up, you're just coming back in the same ship. Yeah, I, I noticed that people are bringing capitals and like I brought my cover two in just to try the mining aspect. I'm like, OK, I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just going to go and try this. But one thing I found out is all the belts are level one. And by the time I warp to another belt, the belt disappears. Okay, so I warp to another belt and the belt disappears. And then by the time I do get somewhere, there's already 10 people hitting the belt, you know? And so uh, <laughs> I didn't get to play for very yeah. long, at least do that. It's, but, a um, bit of a, it's a bit of a rocky start. I mean, this has only been out, what I think, uh, for a little less than 24 hours now. And, uh, you know, already they're finishing the first couple epic voyages and all this stuff. Um, if if you're listening and you're in the game, guys, go ahead and click into this epic voyage and claim your rewards. You can get a couple thousand points just by clicking the buttons. Yeah. Um, I didn't do anything. I was able to collect points. I think it was like because I did some mining outside of the event, it counted toward the event. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing about this event has made any sense to me. I've... Uh, uh, just tried going in there, kicking some butt on some rats, got a few random points. There's a couple of fleets and everybody's shooting everything and people are showing up in Condor 1s and some people are in Nidhoggers. Yeah. And you just never know. You know, and it was funny too when I tried, because I originally went in to, uh, I originally went into the safe zone and I just brought a hurricane because I think that was what it was in the in the drop down that's what it had available to me i was like okay i'm gonna choose a hurricane and i'm gonna go and when you get warped into this space and it's like a nihilist space but it's not it's just like a random system and right like there's like one planet there's one sun there's a couple there's one anomaly there's a couple um asteroid belts there's one station it's an itc of all things I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to go to the sun. I don't want to go to the station. So I went to a belt, and there is a procurer there. And it was neutral, neutral to me. Instinct had it. I immediately uh, tried starting to uh, lock it. I'm like, oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> and then it told me, oh, well, you're in the security system. You can't lock. I'm like, oh, okay. I wonder what that, that other guy was thinking. He's like, what's this dude doing? Locking me? Yellow boxing me? <laughs> I was so disappointed that I couldn't kill the uh, mining barges I stumbled across. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to exit. So I had to figure out how to exit. And then I came back in a mining ship and was doing that whole jumping around thing. I probably spent 10 minutes jumping to hit. It wasn't even 10% in my coveter to uh, to yeah. submit to submit ore. You have to submit ore to this the station. For whatever reason right, so i so guess that's part of the mission i think it's like with with the mining it's a mad scramble to grab the rocks of fashion yeah you know, they're all they level one possibility of coming in a venture eh, that sounds like venture rocks to me i, I mean people are bringing in <laughs> covers and procurers and stuff like that and these belts are not lasting a second like it i i literally clicked on one pressed warp as i'm warping to it it disappeared and i get there and there's nothing there <laughs> Like, okay, so this is how this is going to go. It is wacky, though, to get everybody from different places throughout the game all in one spot. I mean, I was lucky if I found one or two names that I recognized, but it's just constant strangers just yik-yakking and telling everybody to yeah. get out of the uh, rat base. 
there was that, but when in the the room that I was in, there was blues, there was reds, there was grays, and yeah. I even had a corp member in there. I'm like, what the heck? It's like, what's he doing in here? And and people are sharing the fleet and local. I guess there's something about the fleets that are kind of op, and people. I I I just don't know. I haven't got enough time to get into this event, but people are like able to scan a certain amount of times or something. I just yeah. It's something's broke about it. <laughs> Rewards yeah, are shared some, with everyone some. who participates. Okay, so if you're in a fleet, it's actually good. It's better to be in a fleet. You'd think so. Because you'd think maybe people would focus fire and such. Uh, but if this is a fleet, this is the most unorganized, random fleet I've ever been in. Uh, I got to FC uh, for 50 guys in there for about a half hour, maybe an hour to the uh, event cycles for the rats. And uh, yeah, nobody cared about fleet commands. No. <laughs> just just going wherever they go, warping, jump, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Oh, there's a CTA right now. I got to I got to get these uh I got to get these coins ground out, get whatever rewards they are. People get nanocore boxes and stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I really have to play the event some more to really figure out what's going on with it and they keep on using this word sleepers and if i'm not mistaken that's kind of cross-referencing to eo as in like wormhole space is this something like wormhole space uh, maybe our eo vets can probably answer that in on air chat but um i have no experience with it <laughs> i just find it to be really cool it is cool um, how popular it'll be we'll see yeah, it's this not, is not like supposed wormholes. to be going until until the twelfth. So yeah, plenty of time. Unless somehow this event ends early, which I'm not sure if there's some kind of trigger condition where it might end early, but hopefully it doesn't. It should be going for a couple weeks now. We should have almost two weeks left uh, to really give it a try. And it does seem like it's open twenty four seven. So if people want to jump in there and just try it out. I mean, even if you go to the dangerous system, you supposedly won't lose your ship. Yeah. And it, it, for the Interstellar store, it kind of just looks like the generic type stuff that you would get. You get SP, you get paint colors, IP, LP, and some uh, nanocore type stuff. And uh, I can't scroll down to see what else you can get, but um, that's about it for that. So then, <laughs> and one thing I find funny is in the original post, I'll read this here. The balanced version has been online for almost a week. How does everyone feel? Do you still have questions about the version, or do you want to know more about the content of the May Industrial Month in advance? Stay tuned for NetEase's future plans. Uh, they have a roundtable. Now, the original post was April 27th, but they later corrected that because the image that they posted was April 29th. And so they, <laughs> is it, what day is it? Is it the 27th or the 29th? Um, and as the 27th was yesterday, I mean, it wasn't then. So uh, they did correct themselves. So tomorrow they're going to have a round table. I'm guessing they're going to host that on YouTube. Uh, that was leaked. I think they already had that event leaked. Uh, <laughs> people weren't supposed to see that link. And uh, they accidentally leaked it because it was supposed to be an unlisted video. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be on YouTube, that live event. And they don't actually have a time of day here tomorrow, but it says April 29th. So I guess we'll just have to wait for an announcement there. So with this latest yeah. update, uh, they also included Capital Nanocores. The Rata Sunset will be available soon. And as far as I know, it is available now. Um, and they can only be obtained by reverse blueprint. So reverse engineering. Now in the screenshot that I'm That's looking right. at, uh, they look like they're red. These uh, these nanocores that gives more of a red appearance. I mean, I'm 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 looking forward to it. The colors currently, I believe, on some of the ships, some of our capitals are just uh, they're not quite where I'd like it to be. Hopefully, these colors aren't going to be too over the top, though. Yeah, what's better than a, a capital ship that's like blindingly bright? 
I mean, that's oh, yeah. that's how I fit out my first thermographic core. You know, Bing. just just make it as clown shoes, rainbow colored as possible. The uh, you know, I have a Maelstrom in every color, and uh, my CTA one is pink. Don't make fun of me, but anyway, <laughs> the <it. laughs> uh, in 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 this latest patch, they also incorporated corporation management. So they changed the UI a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed that, but they did. And it took me a little bit to figure out uh, where all the features were, like to change permissions. Uh, that was that was one, and to you know be able to manage members and stuff. That was relatively easy to figure out. Uh, they did some changes to the wallet. They inc- they incorporated this points system. So now I'm just giving out daily points, and they have like no value currently because my corp hasn't set anything up similar to like the, you know, as a currency like that. I know some corps do. We used to have a credit system, but we kind of phased that out because of the market depreciation and all that stuff. So the value wasn't there, but now we have this point system that we can allocate points to. We could pay people in points. But oh, sorry, <laughs> Windows update. Um, now we can allocate these points to people for whatever. We can either pay them for their ores, we can send them out, we can request... It, I mean, it's basically like ISK. So, and they also incorporated the mission system to where you can do this. You can, I mean, personally... I was just playing around with it. I did like a test mission and then I'm doing like daily login rewards. I think that's something that's pretty cool to have, um, you know, for your court members to be in the area or whatever. Just, hey, give them some free ISK just for logging in. Um, I think you can even, right. some corps probably even do their buyback system through this system. And, it, you know, what's cool about it is it you don't have to deal with contracts and deal with taxes and crap like that or spreadsheets. So it's... It's actually pretty cool how they streamlined us a bit better. I wonder how many corporations are actually using it by now. Yeah, this is this is going to be, I think, um, a game changer for super corps, right? Uh, that may already have a buyback system ready, uh, and now they can replace it with with this corp mission system. Um, that's that was some of the first thoughts kind of rocked around uh, around my alliance is that uh, this could be used for that, but. I think that's there's going to be so much more. You know, what else can you do with this? Maybe you can use this for logistics, uh, getting your stuff from one place to another. Uh, you know, transport missions. Um, you could even use this uh, for ore reprocessing, where you're offering ore in exchange for minerals. You could totally do all kinds of stuff with this. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. And and one thing that they're missing out, we were kind of talking about it, uh, some core members, is uh, they should add a kill hostile section instead of like okay uh, the corporation's gonna supply or whatever uh similarly to how the concord passes you kill hostiles <clears throat> and you can get paid for it absolutely if 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 this turned into a full-on bounty system that'd be fantastic yeah i told them to submit that as a <laughs> as a suggestion on echo's discord but i don't know if that ever happened but yeah that would be legit it's like yeah just I don't care about uh, neutrals, not so much, but uh, go and you kill hostiles and then you can get paid for it. Make a streamlined system with that. Oh, speaking of, I think... um, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, if this is is the example, if this is the framework they're building to allow us to build all kinds of uh, missions maybe in the future... You know, here it is. This is this is the way it's going to drop in someday. People keep talking about maybe they want alliance hangers and things like that. Stuff that may never come. Maybe this is how we get closer to it. It's a framework that looks like this. Rather than some major game change to functionality that doesn't exist. You know, this is the way we're going to be doing it. Mm-hmm. So I pulled up the Corporation Points system. And they have here, this is on their website... Uh, Corporation points are designed to provide an efficient monetization system to motivate members. Members can gain points issued by the Corp by completing missions published by Corporation Management or through Corporation Market Trading. The total of amount the total amount of each individual's points will be displayed on the Corp members page. So yeah, you can actually track to see um, 
you can even sort it by points as to who has the most points in the corporation and and uh, who's doing the missions and whatnot. You can actually see that. And you can actually put a limit on the amount of uh, times that that mission can be accepted. You can either have it unlimited or just like, first come, first serve, here's a billion isk, boom. And whoever get, whoever clicks accept first gets it. Crazy stuff like that. Um, all the rights for adding and deducting points are controlled by the corporation management. Therefore, the use of the points, such as their exchange value, relies on the corp's guarantee. You need to understand the corp point system and make sure that, that it can be trusted. Yeah. So uh, yeah. one thing that took me a little bit to figure out was the corporation management I guess menu so when you're looking at the missions corporation managers automatically the ceo gets gets the uh whatever you call it <laughs> the the role to be able to do to mess with those settings um what you actually have to do is go into your permission settings as if you're setting like officer roles and whether you know give them wallet permissions or withdrawal permissions or whatever stuff like that toward the end you actually have the points management um, and then also right. mission management for them to be able to add missions and delete missions and stuff like that. So you actually, so if you're going to assign people to be able to do that stuff, it's in the corporation permissions tab, which took me a little bit. Cause uh, I, I mean, I had people are like, how do I create missions? Like, I don't know. I have to figure this out myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then once you create a mission, and you can actually create missions, not only for the corporation, but your for for yourself. And so um, I created right. a co I created a couple corporation ones, but I did I created one for myself, thinking that it was for the corporation. And so I ended up deleting that because then I found out that corporations and individual missions are separate. So I had to play around um, with that some more. But um, yeah, I. I I think it's going to be pretty pretty simple once we get used to using it. I mean, this is definitely a better system than spreadsheets on Discord, right? Yeah. Um, like, like I set myself up a mission for my corp, uh, and it's literally called set, Send Me Veldspar From Anywhere, Get NAS In My Home Station. And it's, they pay me Veldspar, they get a small NAS. <laughs> that's not terrible you know i mean it's it's dumb this example that i've set up but you know say we want uh say we want to have a, a stable of three more retrievers for our new bros that come into our in our into our mining uh system and maybe we're saying hey uh you send me whatever you get a retriever uh and you can limit that to once per character right so maybe they got to send you one Veldspar. Hey, send me something. Get your retriever, but you can only do it once. So now this is a little different than asking some corp manager to go into the hangar and pull one for you. And you don't have to set the hangar up to open. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. Yeah, I'd be excited to see what people uh, make use of this for. And one thing that really um, that immediately came to my mind was to make buyback more efficient. And you can you can set the stations. You can make like a demand of ores and stuff that you'd want. You can set an ISK value per unit. And I'm like, well, geez, if it's all just going to be automated like that, that's that's freaking awesome. You don't have to deal with uh, filling out a spreadsheet. You don't have to deal with contracts. But the only issue is, is you have to go back into that mission and say ore prices change or mineral prices change and you actually when you edit it or update it it deletes the previous mission and basically resets it as a new mission so mm -hmm. that 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 resets the value of like how many pe how many times people can claim that you know depending on whether your buyback has a limit you know per per member that's right so so, so some of these things may be very easy to automate, like or buyback type stuff, and you know people can do it unlimited times. And some things like giving away a free retriever or something, or hey, welcome new guy, here's your own navy. Uh, yeah, those might be a little more touchy. You don't want to touch the uh, the mission too much and give away ten omen navies to the same guy. Or maybe you do and you don't care. You know, someone wants ten omen navies. God bless you. Go for it. <laughs> someone say you casino. Know? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
The and, and another thing with that is you can set it for only certain roles can see that mission. So say I, I set one up and um, only the CEO can see that mission. I'm like, oh, well, crap, I need to delete that and then I need to add more roles so more people can see this. So uh, when you make a mission, you actually have to add all the roles um, of all the people that you want. Like in my corp, I have a role specifically for alts. Like if I have a daily login reward of X amount of ISK, I don't want to pay their alts. I want to pay their actual like main character. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so right. I don't want to, I, I kind of want to limit the amount of ISK I want to spend at the same time, reward them, but I don't want to reward their alts. So, I mean, just stuff to figure out, yeah. but that's a pretty cool system. I was playing with it. Lots of fun stuff. I'm looking forward to with all these balance changes where doctrines are probably going to rotate around. Uh, if we have, say, a trade in program and it says, hey, sell us your old Megatron, get a Typhoon, or something like that, this is what it's built for, right? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. You will get a Typhoon if you pay a Megatron. Bam. Yeah. Dish out some SRP ships, maybe do some trade ins. Right. I got some ships to trade SR, in. SRP, I haven't quite figured out how you can possibly automate that. You know, it, it'd be kind of cool if you could turn in your own lost mail and stipulate uh, that it's got more than two enemies listed on it and no rats or something, whatever your SRP demands, and have it kick out a, uh, kick out a return for it automatically. We'll see. <laughs> and it pulls straight from the Alliance wallet. Oh, amazing. <laughs> no, I got crickets on that. Not funny. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Corporation Citadel new features. Um, Corporation Citadel can immediately scan and discover the highest level pirate base in the system by consuming a certain amount of fuel. If a pirate base already exists in the current system, the old pirate base beacon will disappear. The scan functions as a 48 hour cooldown. In addition, the layout of the Corporation Citadel management page has been adjusted so more functions can be added to the Corporation Citadel in the future. Uh, I, this is one feature I did not mess with, um, so I'm not really educated on this exact thing. It's like, discover the highest level pirate base, so if you're in a yeah. T6 system, your highest base is, or sorry, a minus 0.6 system. Your highest base is going to be T nine. So, right. so, so, so here's the rundown on how this works. Somebody comes in and decides to be a, a real jerk, and overnight they uh, take an RB co ops and level your T ten base. And you come back in the morning going, "Oh man, T one." Well, you just push this button and you turn in some heavy water and you get your T ten back. Interesting. And you, and that's it. You know, no more wow. randomly. Go in a strip somebody's whole constellation and keep the bases down. You just push the button, and it's such a minor fuel cost that you don't really care. Interesting. So this is probably something to do with uh, like anti griefing for the people that can get their bases wiped. I think so. I think so. I mean, this really helps our ratters, right? People who like to do ratting is how they get their isk, that kind of thing. And doesn't have too much of an impact on the rest of the play styles. Um, so I think Nettie's is trying to push Radic. I mean, we also got that other button that you can push to double up your uh, double up a bounty tick. Right. They're kind of helping us get yes. I think they're tired of seeing us complaining of being you know hell camped into uh, a bunch of T1 bases all over my home systems. Yeah. And then then what next? The uh, find a cloaky. Scanning button. <laughs> Reveal cloaks. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that, that one's been bantered around forever now, right? And it, nothing coming of it, but do we need it anymore? I mean, there's there's no point in leveling a base. Is there any other reason to find a cloaky sitting in your system? Yeah. I mean, so, aside from yeah. scouts or cameras... Like, ooh, you're in my home system, and there's four cameras. I'm going to go find them. It's like, why do you care? <laughs> They're not there for you. Yeah. For my corp. But, uh, yeah, it, that was another one of those where uh, 
you know, people would sit cloaked for hours upon end and uh, wait for something juicy to undock and then go after it and then log out and then do the whole thing over again. So there, there's been a list of complaints about that. Yeah. Now that's got a natural counter though. It's called if you undock with something juicy and you get jumped on, we'll kill that dude. Right. And his Jodo. buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and his buddies. And his multi you know, box. Grab some friends. And his multi box. Get get ten a year alts to fight his ten alts. Perfect. You get know? a camera to That's... watch his camera. Find his camera, put your camera sitting next to it, <laughs> watching his camera. <laughs> yeah. So that you know something like that's probably gonna be coming. People have been talking about that for a long time. And it was even rumored back in the day before the Citadel structures went down. Uh, I mean, came out was that we were going to get a system structure that revealed cloakies like that. Right. Wasn't it supposed to be you could push a button every so often and just turn off cloaks mm -hmm. and then go? You it just scans the system. To go find it, them. It's like that. Um, it's like that resonance scanner, the the red one, where you just click the button right. and it just scans everything, cloaks and all. But only Sov corporations were able to do that if you had that thing, you know. <clears throat> we haven't seen it yet. And they may not well, release it. Maybe we'll get it. Maybe it'll come out right next to uh, jump bridges, you know? <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Wormholes and uh, moon mining, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which we're supposed to be oh, getting. Yeah. Maybe they'll drop that one of these weeks that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah. Now, now th these, these are big changes to the system, to the, the, the current functionality of the game. I think scanning for cloak ships isn't too much of a change, right? Maybe maybe that button is just literally a red scanner that allows you to warp to a cloaked ship rather than saying, hey, no ships found. Uh, things like wormholes this is going to be a big thing. Maybe this new event is the precursor to this. Maybe they're actually working on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the surprise they're going to give us. You know, the same day they drop the industry update. Hey, surprise wormholes. Oh, God. That'll be that'll be absolute chaos. That'll make it fun. Now I'm not sure about wormholes, but I am pretty sure that they're adding moon mining. They did have a um and an a Q and A about that. <laughs> oh really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I remember well, talking well, about it. Saying about the uh, yeah. It's just in the it's in the works. They didn't have like a release time from what I know of, but it's just in the works. Coming soon. Yeah. Mark. Which I was thinking, I was like, I don't even think I have a moon in my system. Or the three systems. Like, I haven't seen any moons. You know, I, <laughs> the, the only moon I've seen in this entire game is... So I live in Delve in this little system, MO Tech, with an with a NPC station there. And it happens to be sitting next to a moon mm -hmm. that is only like... It's only like a thousand kilometers away. You can just slow boat over there, and now you're inside the moon. But it's nothing you can warp to. It's just a, a big thing in the sky that has a shape and it's technically a moon it looks like a moon it smells like a moon mm -hmm. you know maybe they'll do something with it we'll say if it's the only one of kind i've ever seen yeah. station sitting next to it yeah in in from all the moons that i've seen they've always been next to uh npc stations right right yes yes that's that's what i mean i've never seen them sitting somewhere else i can't go to a planet and find uh find Phobos orbiting there. Yeah. Something to look forward to. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, what else did they have? I had to click back. I clicked off my sheet here. New Eden store updates. The uh, limited time packs, such as the Lazarus Unit Value Bundle. And the Lazarus Unit Bundle and Lazarus Unit Special Offer will be available until May 17th. Um... They have limited time weekend packs such as weekend special offers, skill conversion bundle, and those will be available to May 16th. So money grab, typical, not surprised. Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked. Is it uh, if you're gonna respec, right, and you're gonna spend normally plex to to do your respec? Is buying Lazarus units actually cheaper than paying with plex? I haven't looked into the numbers yet. Oh. Somebody was saying, no, actually, when the Lazarus unit, no? when those points came out originally, at the current rate, at the time, 
of Plex. It was actually cheaper to Plex. That seems like why introduce this system? Why not just give us more Plex? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Plex, but you can only spend it on one thing. Kind of like IP, you can spend it on resurrecting your ship, but you can't use it to get your ship out of impound. Yeah, they've almost got the nail in the head. Well, here. then it's like, but why it's, didn't they just incorporate Plex rewards in the Concord Pass? Hmm. You know, like what they are doing with Lazarus points, they're incorporating that. They, they're not. From what I know, they're not gifting Plex out, but they gifted tech tiers. You know, X amount of Lazarus points. Right, right. So maybe it has has, has something to do with economy. Uh, that that was quite a bit of free Lazarus points coming out for. Uh, I mean, I got ten yeah, million 10. for yeah, t yeah. T ten. ten. It was really nice. That's, uh, that's that's pretty nice. Maybe I can uh, maybe I can finally convince uh, Crimson King to uh, get rid of his uh, decomposer skills. No, though I think he'll actually do the opposite and add more. Decomposers are <laughs> OP. They already are. <laughs> I remember when That's I was in the rumor going around. I remember yeah. when I was T seven using a can you prototype on T six large anomalies. Yeah. <laughs> using yeah. decomposer. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Then uh, mm -hmm. continuing on, they talked more about this event, uh something about a sleeper vessel. An ancient and unexpected discovery. There are anomalous signals gathering there, and they want to explore the system. So they have this uh, Verge of Silence, we already talked about this, April 28th to May 11th. Um, there are two mo mission locations, Safe System and Perilous System. Safe System, capsulers cannot attack each other. In the Perilous System, capsulers can attack each other. In the Safe System, you can complete missions like upgrading the space station and clearing the dormant domain. In the Perilous Systems, your, missions, your mission is to retrieve data. Capsuleers will not lose any ship modules in this mission. So they, they give you a ship. And you know what's funny? Is in that hurricane that I took into that safe system, it had an MWD yeah. on it, but it was grayed out. Like, I didn't have the cap... Because I, I completely skilled out of battle cruisers. I don't use battle cruisers. And so oh, yeah. my capacitor <laughs> capacity wasn't enough to fit a MWD on it. So I was like, oh, wow, they allowed me to undock. <laughs> oh yeah 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 i'm i i am loving that you can bring in whatever ship you want i am seeing so many random ships i saw two guys out in molluses today which i've just i've never seen a mollus undocked in my life and today i saw two dig it interesting yep uh they talked about the mission assembly competition with the popularity of corporation missions, capsuleers can use corporation missions to assemble. Corporations with excellent assembly ability will receive unique metal rewards. Um, I looked at these metals, and there's a gold, silver, and bronze, and it has a horn on it. So, Interesting. <laughs> like, oh, yay, a new metal. But I don't think it would be <laughs> really sought after because it's kind of... Um, yeah, I mean, it's unique, but it's kind of dull. I would love for metals to be a little more... Um, Personalized. Than what they are. Yes, yeah, something. To have some significance. Maybe, uh, maybe it really means something. Uh, I mean, right now, all I see metals doing is sitting in front of people's names in the local list. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't really... I don't really... Of all the things I want to see, that's not exactly what I want to see in local. But it would be cool if... You could, for example, look at a person and see what their true metal histories is and have it mean something specific. Yeah. Like, you know, thanks from a corporation. Like, you know, a corporation could pay two bill to give you a medal. You could show this off forever that you were a true friend and – or a, a good friend and true or however Mr. Rogers or whoever used to say that um, <laughs> or something like that. But right now, I don't even know what my medals mean. You know, here's one that says I was around on a certain date. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Honk has that that one that's unique to them. Actually, yeah, I think they have yeah, two because they won a corp. They won a corp contest too. I think they have a medal for oh, that. That's right. And then yep. they have the one uh, about New Eden, saving New Eden. <laughs> they the care for the safety. The yeah, they care for the safety of New Eden. 
And I, see, I we need all more metals like that. Listeners know that. Yeah, that are that are unique to some sort of you accomplish something. Yeah, I dig it. And then the uh, senior content creator, but just a content creator medal. I've been uh, begging for. <laughs> Right. So Slippy had said it's contributing to the normal functioning of New Eden. That's that's what that metal states. With their sharp eyes and cephalous spirit. It's a cool metal. It's really one of the best looking metals in the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if people don't know, I mean Honk's got a reputation, but if uh if they didn't know, Honk is the saviors of New Eden. Selfless spirit, man. I mean it says right there. Right? The selfless spirit, it's right there on a metal. Dig it. It's pretty cool, though. I mean, it is a unique thing. Uh, yeah, Tritanium. Um, what was that? Times um, 40 billion? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah. a, it was uh, a Tritanium duplication glitch or something. That... Right. The uh, integer overflow at like 2.1 billion yep. or however that worked. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, senior... Not even the senior content creator, but the content creator medal I've been begging for pretty much every month. I tell them, hey, I want <laughs> I want a content creator uh, medal. Could I that have it? Be really cool. Because when they did release those, those were only to the senior content creators. And so that means literally 90% of all the other content creators didn't get it. Because I think we only had three oh, senior content creators at the time. I feel like it should be something kind of like how YouTube does a, uh, you know, you get a silver gold plaque as you get subscribers, some sort mm -hmm. of thing for content creators to work towards uh, and then eventually earn it. You know, did, um, show off. Did, did you fill out the content creator form? I did not. I'm leaving that to uh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie's doing that for, for my show. Yeah. So a little bit of insider info for the people that did do that. Don't expect to get considered until the middle of May. So just, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's because there's a holiday uh, for okay. in the beginning of May there. And uh, so I, I guess they're going to be looking at applications then for potential new recruits as far as content creators go. And uh, yeah, we'll see how many actually make it in. So people that did submit their applications. I guess you have to be a little bit patient. <laughs> did, did they announce if there was like a set limit, a set number of people they were considering? Not that I know of. of vacancies? Not that I know of. Mm. Yeah, I, I, as far as I know, they're probably going to try and grab as many as they can for to get more people to join the program. But they're going to be considered... Um, junior content creators and so they're going to have limited access to things granted they'll get the content creator channel on discord through their you know official discord and they and we get to talk and you know bs with everybody in there but you know me and taylor were talking about this is like the reason why you would want to become or one reason one perk of being a content creator is to get access to fulmination so you can do more content and do whatever you want right. and not have to worry about ISK and Plex and, you know, you can super yourself up. Um, but there's a lot of controversy going on in content creators right now. It's because, you know, with their, um, the, the new demands that they're having, you know, with subscribers and stuff, like, like I was saying, I, I barely even make content creator, let alone uh, make a senior content creator. I was like, it should just be by tenure. Been doing this for like, 20 months give me a break <laughs> right <laughs> um you know regardless of subscribers but uh, yeah that's, that's kind of a big thing 20 months doing this i mean i mean this game is it's pushing its uh its two-year mark and yep. uh there there aren't many that can say they've been doing the content creator thing from day one right yeah i mean benzy and damon have been pretty much and then everybody else either had stopped, may not be doing it anymore, or had come later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's just something with the CCs, and uh, you know, we we talk about it. It's almost daily. We talk about the stuff, and and we constantly are requesting info. So, say like this event, 
This event, oh, and I was going to get onto this also. I was going to talk about this. This event, according to Cartley, she gets the info a couple hours before even the content creators get the info, which is a couple hours before everybody else gets the info. So this is coming yeah. like from the developing team themselves. They don't even tell the community manager until hours before this stuff is going to drop because we're like you know kind of scratching our heads like what event nobody's talked about w what feature these features i mean we had no clues we want to test this stuff we want to be able to hype people you know we want to talk about it and get people hyped as you know for the next week's update and what to expect but they're releasing stuff the day of by the time we're hearing about it i mean we're we're minus, we're just like everybody else i mean getting the info at that point it's like we we get it an hour before the announcement goes live <laughs> it isn't quite enough notice to really start planning a uh plan a video or plan a show or but, something you know it is it is possible that we are starting to get with them now with cartley being the new community manager we're kind of been pushing it a lot of content creators been pushing it as to like hey you know something needs to change from the top as to when you get information and then when you give us that information compared to when it goes live so we can actually do this and you know thinking about it as a content creator aspect and i don't want to get too far into this because we can talk about this for two hours <laughs> but um so I, I i've seen this with other games the the developers will release, say, a, a game update. They'll release it to their content creators. Their content creators will join their special server or play their special box or whatever and mess with the stuff and go through all the stuff and, and show people what to expect, you know? And then give the update a week or two later. And then that way people are... They, they know, you know, what to look forward to coming into the game when they log in next. What does that do for the YouTube side? That gets people, it, it makes people want to come to your channel to be able to watch your show. You know, like if Benzie has, yeah. you know, top secret information nobody knows about, we're going to flood over to his channel and watch his videos to get that info that nobody has, right? So... In that sense, he's going to get views. He's going to get subscribers because he's constantly providing that content. That's good for that aspect of the game. That's what we need. That's that's what we're what NetEase wants to promote as with the new senior content creator status. But they're not giving us info. We signed an NDA. We don't get anything secret. <laughs> it's like we, we don't talk about anything because they don't give it to us. But anyway, um. So we're working on it and you know uh, maybe they'll make some changes so cool stuff um yeah and so what else did they have uh, the vote on the corp poster is still going oh and they incorporated this too the seven day sign-in gifts so on top of your of your daily login you have another tab in that events page to get more sign-in gifts and i think so far the first right. one's been like isk not isk um sp so you know your common type stuff nothing um too outrageous uh they did some optimizations they optimated the they optimated <laughs> they uh, updated the estimate prices based on successful transactions in the market uh, they did that twice i guess <laughs> and uh the top 30 in the poster competition has been revealed so vote for your corporation so it can make it to the top 20 Check it in game event page for those details. So that was it for that patch notes. That was pretty lengthy. Uh, a lot of it was ghost dropped, and some of us were not really happy about that. And we had to learn it, you know, an hour before it uh, went public. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, let's see what else do they got. They have some official media stuff. They're really just talking about the corporation management. They did release a video on how to mess with all that now when i was messing with all the corporation mission features um i didn't even know the video was out so for people that don't know about that there's a video uploaded by netease um that goes over all that stuff so uh you just have to look for it on their 
I don't even think it's in their official media tab. I I did see it somewhere. Maybe it was in their announcements. Yeah, it's in their announcements. Corporation mission system introduction by Eve Echoes. You could watch that video and figure out how to do the missions and stuff. Right, and, and that's that's something I think everybody should should dig into it. Um, again, you can use it for such such amazing and such a such a wide uh, a type of type of things you can, you can get your corp members to help you out with. Yeah. I I hate hauling my tritanium two jumps from my mining system to my building system, but hey, if there's a mission to do it, ooh, buddy. Yeah, hire someone to uh, give them fake points, give them fake yeah. money, and uh, have them move it for you. <laughs> oh no, these are points. These are good as isk. Yes, depending whether or not yeah. they could trust you. It depends if you can trust your corp. <laughs> uh, you know, if suddenly your corp leader gives out. Uh, you know, 30 trillion points. Should, should uh, we talk about bugs? I mean, we, we've been talking about this for a little bit now, um, but the amount of bugs in this, I mean, uh, they revealed the font and color codes in the, uh, in the text on their update announcement screen. And so if, in case you didn't know, if you typed that and put it into your chat, it would change the font and it would change, not necessarily the font, but it would change the, uh, the header size the font size and you can change colors you see that i, I believe slippy somebody posted a, a red honk in the chat earlier yeah uh i i'm hoping they get this uh patch soon um Jita has been a mess and uh, yeah certain members of my alliance have been um, very happy to spam uh very big letters the last couple of days <laughs> yeah, and you know, and the first time I saw it, it like took up the entire alliance chat. I'm like, what happened? What the heck is that? It was so it was actually pretty funny when I first saw it. But now now that more and more people are realizing how to do it, and this is solely the game doing it. Like the <laughs> they teased the dang announcement and really and revealed that code for everybody to see in the announcement so like oh what if i were to copy and paste this into the game chat and there you go now you can change font color and all that stuff but from what i was hearing the um yeah it's possible it existed the entire time now it just got revealed yeah yeah um well i was i, I was actually told that the help chat was it was happening so much in the help chat it was actually crashing games. Now I don't know that to be sure, but um people are saying to stay out of the help chat in that sense. So one more reason to never join help chat. I mean I I'm never in it as it is, but that's just a tip for people that may have already realized it actually. It's like shoot, their game crash because their help chat keeps overloading with all the different fonts and stuff. I don't want to see help chat ruined. It is someplace I stop by about twice a week and do some corp advertising or maybe just talk to people and whatnot. And it, I think it's been a big resource for new players as a place to really go and ask. Uh, you know, I've seen people asking hard to understand questions when you're a new player, like uh, uh, how can I make my guns shoot further? Right. You know, sometimes that's kind of hidden. Uh, you know, it's not part of. I think the uh, the uh, basic tutorials is how to put a uh, uh, put a rig on that gives you you know extra fall off or something. Um, and that's that's where people can answer it. But if it's just going to be flooded with uh, spam, what I've seen it mostly flooded with is just the word honk. <laughs> yeah, different colors. Yeah, small font. <laughs> this is a large honk, small honk, big honk. <laughs> yeah, medium honk. Yeah. It was actually pretty entertaining to watch, um, though. Yeah, people are just doing weird things with that. And then uh, again, with local, local is like even worse than it was before. And it, now it, it's delayed when it's loading, and it doesn't. It's just annoying. They can't seem to get that right. <laughs> you know, ho ho hopefully this will be changed pretty soon. I mean, this is this is. I was talking with a couple of programmer friends that, that I, I play with here uh, in EVE, and they're saying this is just data data sanitization, you know, input sanitization is uh, not a huge uh, uh, task to implement. It's just if they choose to do it. And I think like 
most of NetEase's bugs they put in here. It's just a bit poor quality control when it comes to standardization uh, of, of how they set up their code. Just like every time they uh, make an update and break drones or break local or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll get around to it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> And then one last thing uh, from the um, official Discord, the Evecos Discord, I mean, is uh, they announced that uh, they're looking for Discord moderators, so you can actually apply to be a moderator. But um, don't be, <laughs> don't rush to do that. I mean, I applied months ago and I got denied. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how badly they need moderators. So I thought that was a bit funny. Is that is that something? I mean, I've I've been over there very few times, but it hasn't seemed like a you know crap show. No, you just that. silence and mute people for speaking outright and posting nude images and stuff like that. So, you know, the typical mm -hmm. kind of moderation stuff. Delete yeah. messages, whatever. Yeah. Alrighty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so with that uh we will cut to a commercial break man we've been talking for a long time and um uh, i'd like to hear from some people as to what they're doing in this event i'm hearing people are dropping capitals and it's not fun i don't know let's uh let's get some words from some people in new eden we'll be right back You're listening to Echoes of New Eden. GRA is a tactical group geared towards guerrilla warfare, consisting of flexible pilots who adapt to any and all developments of the game, utilize tactics together with the team, thrive under pressure in small gang warfare, be part of a federation, apply by contacting a GRA representative or join their discord at lgorilla.online. More info can be found at www.elgorilla.com. Become Lord of the Legend. Are you tired of losing structures? Tired of nobody showing up to your POS defense? Don't worry, Care Bears with Guns is here for you. We're a family first, orientated group of folks in no space with fancy technology toys like kill mill parsing and ship item dispensary bots. We've got a calendar full of PVE, mining, and PvP ops for however you like to make your eggs. Come play with me and try us out today. Warp drive active. And you know what? Um, PM Blue was supposed to send me a new commercial for his Blue Financial Services. I'll, I'll plug this since he was supposed to give it to me, but never did, so he probably forgot. But uh, it looks like he is using his bot to um, do some like financing. He can, you, do, you can do financing, you can do gambling, you can do bounties, you can do buyback bonds global currency he has a whole discord for this and everything holy moly it, yeah you know he's gonna be the uh what was the name of that guy that used to do that in eve online who was the uh oh i have no idea the main uh there, there was this there was one guy who did everything as far as like finance he you know who like ran the bank and there was a whole fleet of bankers BM Blue, the next, uh, the next uh, big tycoon. Yeah, I'm thinking. <clears throat> well, I <laughs> I did post a coalition server today. Um, Oxal Spot is the new end boss because <laughs> it's taking over everything. Yeah, just a funny joke there. <laughs> I mean, he's done solid work with that bot. I'm really impressed. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody really wants to talk about this event, so I guess uh, nobody's been doing it. <laughs> They've all been um, doing their CTAs, I hope, instead of grinding out for these uh, these coins, these interstellar coins. I think we'll be hearing more about people doing the event in the next couple of days. I mean, it's only up for two weeks, but it's such a weird weird event yeah it's not really obvious what it is we're doing in there and whether it's worth it 
the you know and in the time that i was in there like i didn't have like a super great time i guess i mean i spent more time warping around than doing anything but uh i, I don't know some of the pvp aspects i mean i wanted to get some of that stuff because i haven't tried that server yet um it, you know to open up for the pvp but i people can bring in their own capitals and just do the anomaly or do the mission or do pvp on it it's not really from what i'm hearing it's not really fun they're kind of ruining it's, it uh, for everyone yeah it, some people do bring in their you know their nidhoggers or their you know crazy expensive ships some people bring in little stuff and i don't really know if it's a bad thing i, I just don't know what's going on in that in this, <laughs> i don't think anybody so does random. Blues shooting blues, reds not shooting reds. I, it's it's chaos. Hmm. I wonder if you even get kill mills in that, and whether or not um, that's gonna fudge with uh, war stats. Oh, I got a kill mill. It's from a red, but it's in this system. Oh, you don't get kill mills. Okay, that was just a thought. <laughs> oh man. But that'd, yeah, we that'd be a way to break the bot. Maybe we'll get some more info on this later. Um, yeah, because it's too new. I haven't played much. You haven't played much on it. Um, we'll, we'll figure something out probably next week. Maybe Taylor has spent some time to uh, play around with that, and then he can give us the gist of things. But Should we talk about this war? What's going on with this war, Rosalind? Holy moly. I did a terrible thing the other day. I, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be great friends with Mackenzie, and I, I blew up her station. Uh, it's, this war has been just nutso. Oh, yeah, nutso. I mean, it, and it just gets crazier and crazier, right? So, um, a few days ago, I did reach out to, uh, Zen, and I did tell, and I did ask him, like, hey, you know, can I get some numbers? I was supposed to have numbers last week for people, but I didn't get those. He had forgot. But anyway, <laughs> he sent me some numbers this time around, and so I actually have some uh, war numbers from the SHH side. So this is approximate estimates based off submitted kill mails. So total damages is 5.9 trillion. Captured citadels is over 15. Destroyed citadels is over 23. Over 91 player-owned stations have been destroyed. Over 15 capitals destroyed and over 5,000 ships destroyed. And that's just from the SHH side. Can you believe that? Holy crap. That's bonkers. I, I wasn't expecting numbers of trillions to show up anywhere. But here they are. It's well, bonkers. I think we're averaging close to two two trillion a week, right? Whew. Yeah. So that that is a lot of damages, and that's like citadels going down. And like you'd said, Mackenzie Citadel Belcorp went down a day or two ago, amongst others. And uh, with all the costs with POSs and capitals, capitals. I mean those. Those aren't cheap. Those are th two, three, four times the the, the cost of a uh, citadel. So um, crazy stuff with that. But those are some approximate numbers from the uh, SHH side. Now I did ask Mama Rex. I did ping her and asked for some um, killboard stats from her and also a state of war. And I did not get anything. So I was just told that they were busy, and uh, eventually they will get back to me to give me some numbers so yeah just so happened to be today with um being busy we did notice that there are a number of corporations that left genesis today and so several of them made public announcements on reddit uh more notoriously so far i've seen um orc noir and to my surprise honk um <laughs> they submitted a, a departure of genesis um in, in theirs but um yeah i mean rocket just posted it in the um in the on-air chat orc noir twix evo one wicked hdr xtc kor 
G-O, and B-B-B-Q are all the corps leaving and they're forming their own alliance called the Brethren's Court. And I believe Brethren's Court will be hosted by ORC, Ozier himself. So, um, cool. Good for them. You know, they're splitting off and they're doing their own thing. And, uh, you know, and we're kind of seeing a repeat of the Pantheon War in this sense. I think a lot of people are comparing this to the Pantheon War. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been predicting some similarities. You know, I've been part of, I was part of part of the Pantheon crew. And uh, now if you look at, say, Pantheon's old space, Delve and Fountain, for the most part, Delve and Fountain, it's just this fractured mess, this chaotic mess that's a lot of fun. Uh, if this is the way that Jen goes, I predict they'll have a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's so much fun to have grays to shoot that aren't 40 jumps away. They're right next exactly. to Exactly. You know, this this is how you get your community back together. Something to, something to fight, a reason to live. So maybe they got good success coming. You know, maybe there's, maybe this is a, uh, Breaking new ground, turning a new leaf, and uh, uh, having fun with smaller groups. I don't know. But, you know, we'll wait to see some announcements come out, like like you were saying, and how it really shakes out. Yeah. With the – so yeah, the, the list I just rambled off, that was, I don't know, through the grapevine. That was just posted on the on-air chat. Now, I only know of two of them on that list that actually made, uh, like, official announcements on Reddit. However, I don't know about the others, whether or not they just left and said, oh, we're done, and they ended up getting purged off the Discord or whatever. I, I just don't know. Um, mm. But, uh, yeah, there's just... And I, I see Rocket. I see that Michael JD posted that. Okay, yeah. Credit to him. <laughs> Where is he? He's not even in here anymore. So, yeah, like I was saying... So, so lurks Go ahead. Lurks, Lurks asking in the chat, uh, you know, what's left is Jen and KJ. Oh. Um, yeah, Lost, EMP, Rifles and Whiskey, PPU, Jen, May, uh, Get, right? Get is still in uh, Genesis. So we'll be seeing as to um, what they decide to do, whether or not they rebrand into something else or continue with their Gen Imperium. Uh, thing I didn't notice on the Genesis Discord, they went and they reverted back to their old logo. They didn't have the blacked out one anymore. And uh, Mama Rex changed one of her Discord pictures to that logo. So, uh, not really sure what's going on over there. Biggest news Rocket yeah. is back. <laughs> what were you going to say? It's uh, it's it's been a bit of mystery, you know, to I think some players like myself who aren't uh, you know deep into the uh, diplo and politics, just being part of the war on either side and wondering what the heck is really going on. Um, and I I know Reddit is is a good place to find out some information, but oh man, sometimes that place can be a real cesspool. And, yeah, you know, digging through and finding out what you really want to know is can be a bit. Man, and there was a post the other day where my moderation queue was getting lit up. Like, people are deleting comments and flagging comments. I'm like, what the hell is happening over here? I literally, <laughs> that, that day in Reddit was like, um, okay, I'm just going to stay off it because that day was considerably bad as, as far as toxicity goes. Normally, the the stories and the stuff that gets put on there is pretty tolerable. But that day was like, wow, people are really uh, lashing at each other. So um, I never seen so many deleted comments, by the way. <laughs> people are going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Reddit, you will never find a more wrenched hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> it's the Tatooine of, uh, of the internet, huh? Isn't that what 4chan is supposed to be? <laughs> I thought that... Didn't that get banned, 4chan? Didn't that get, like, taken down? For reasons I'm not going to say? Here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm i pretty sure I know why it got taken down, but I'm not going to say it. I'll, I'll leave it the suspense for people to look it up. But anyway, P 
people <laughs> I've I've already been hearing about this current war going on with Genesis as to uh and they're, they're like I said it, they, they keep comparing it to the Pantheon war as in Genesis isn't lasting as long as Pantheon did Pantheon actually put up a fight blah 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 right and uh seemingly like all these corpses are leaving and it's looking like they're falling faster than Pantheon did mm. it's well which you wouldn't expect so some of these corpses are leaving, but it's not all in one swift go. I mean, when Pantheon fell, it was literally overnight. Yeah, yeah, true. Of, of just an announcement of, and we're done. See you guys. No more firesides. We're done. Yeah. And it was a it was a swift fall to, you know, various alliances going. Well, can we stand on our own? And some alliances moving out, some disbanding, um, and. I, I I don't quite see Jen doing that yet, and I'm hoping they don't go fast. I hope there's there's a smooth transition as people figure out, you know, what to take away from this war and what they want to do with their gameplay style. Yeah, um, it does change the the wire aspect of like doing stuff with the alliance and within your corporation and stuff. Just changes. It's funny how that is, but it just changes weird, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Rocket brings up something that, that I've I've been hearing this a lot recently is that, is that you know he's saying that the Pantheon was a federation of multiple alliances. Chen is one giant alliance. Is that is that is that ring true? I mean, I've been hearing this a lot, and uh, I think the difference in leadership structure is what sort of defines these things, and what their natural evolutions are. Yeah. Uh, you know how how to evolve from a corp to an alliance to a Mega Alliance, I guess you might call Jen. Well, if you want to compare, I, I suppose Pantheon, it did have, yeah, Pantheon did have separate alliances that were under the Pantheon umbrella, right? So, let's see, what was Blap in? Did Blap, was there, were, were they their own alliance or were they within a different alliance under Pantheon? Yeah, Blap. Blap was uh, a part of part of Pantheon, but not so much like uh, sister alliances. Like they had, uh, I'm not can't even remember the you know, Happy Bees and Happy Bees Hispania and Happy Bees Two. You know, various alliances that are really just extensions of one. And then you had groups like T Cos and Boop, and TSC and Blap, uh, and, um, that are that are separate families within the same. Uh, same umbrella of friendship. I'm not even sure what to call these things anymore because coalition is a different word, right? You know, and mega line is a different word. So yeah, and comparing that to say SHH, and the SHH is yeah, it's one alliance, but it's made up of several you know smaller alliances. So you have Bot Five and Care Bears with guns, and then you have Silent Main Alliance and so on and so forth and genesis it just seems with them they have you know they have get and get two and k gen and all these others they're they're i don't know 10 <laughs> there there's quite a few I, I did see a reddit post of people right. adding up all the the smaller alliances that are underneath that umbrella but they're made up of quite a few people that's right and and spread across so many so many regions i mean everything from they were in Delve all the way through the bottom, all the way up to as far as I think Deterid, maybe. Yeah. That's as far as yeah. I think Jen has has gone. Um, that's that is massive. That is a massive smiley face along the whole southern well, border. I'm actually I'm I'm curious to see how the transition of power is going to happen now in those regions. Now that you have these other alliances forming up, I know um, Oz and uh, an FL over in that pocket over there near BZ. They, uh, you know, they're doing their own thing with the the red-handed, um, <laughs> not red-handed bandits. They, what were they called? Red-handed. Oh, it was it was just here. That town. The new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not in game, so I can't check. But um, I know it's something like that. But yeah, like they're gonna control that little pocket of space, and then you know, with ORC and them doing their own thing, now they're gonna get some sort of territory not really sure as to what they are 
going to control yet, I guess, or where they're going to move and consolidate just yet. I think that really still has to be determined because maybe they know it, but I just don't know it because that is such new news since it was only like four hours ago they announced that. So, um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing, you know, it, it, the, the changes of powers in those areas. And then I'm sure Genesis will still be around, but there'll be a much smaller entity, you know, equal to one of the size of the others that had split off probably. So that's just what I'm mm. thinking. I, I don't know if that to be true, but, and you know, who, who knows with some of the Chinese corporations and, uh, um, I know they have a, a Korean section of them too, case Soul, something like that. Um, you know, whether or not they'll do their own thing or, we, 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 you know, it's still, there's still some time in this war. They're still getting attacked. There's still citadels getting attacked. It's the war is technically not over because Jen hasn't technically fallen. So I think there's the coalition is still going to be doing their attacks with that. So. We could only just, uh, I guess it's a wait and see at this point to see what else happens. Yep. Yeah. You know, for, for each, for each involved on both sides to declare their war goals, uh, is, is a hard thing to do. I mean, it's easy to say at the beginning of a war, what you want to see your own outcome to be, you know, what thing are you pressing for? But then once you get deep into it and you're having as much fun as hopefully everybody is having fun. Do you want to stick to those war goals, or do you want to keep going and modify it as you go? Uh, I mean, this isn't this isn't like anything we've ever really seen. I think in this game, uh, you know, yeah. these these big wars that happen set new precedents every day. You know, and, and and you live in Delve, and you know you're close to Fountain and whatnot. But after Pantheon had fallen, didn't yeah. that make things interesting though in that area? Didn't that change up the game? Absolutely, absolutely. My my least favorite type of CTA was, hey guys, hop in the slowest battleship you can and go all the way across the galaxy to do a one-hour fight with the total two, three hours on each side traveling. That was, and I don't do that anymore. I get to go fight stuff that's, you know, at most 10 jumps away. Uh, and I get to go, you know, bop on somebody that's, got a fleet of 10 and i've got a fleet of 10 there's no more 1400 pilots in a system happening in in delve anymore uh which means i get to i get to come with a kitchen sink i get to fly my omen navy issue gosh darn it <laughs> yeah and at the same time you don't have to worry about structures going down or anything because there's probably you know agreements in place it's like oh yeah you know we're neutral with each other but we can kill each other all day and not be you know having to start a whole war Unless you, sure. uh, unless you take in a thief, I mean, then wars start. <laughs> what, one of the, my most favorite things I have done since Pantheon has fallen is my, my alliance, Blap, uh, and our uh, neighbor alliance, the Space Cows, which, you know, we're also part of Pantheon with us, uh, did about a month and a half of just bopping each other as hard as we could, and it never escalated. It never was quit calling some friends because we want overwhelming firepower. We were just happy, happy with 50 on 50 fights. And if there was a station in hull and somebody shows up with 30 dudes and we show up with 30 dudes and they show up with 30 dudes, you know, getting two or three or four that come out of the woodwork or log on changes the game rather than getting 500 people, you know, versus 500. And then the two or three don't really make a difference. So everybody mm -hmm. felt like they were not just a cog in a machine, but a valuable contributing member because one extra body, one extra ship on the field, or two if you've got, you know, alts to do it, can really contribute to these smaller size engagements and whatnot. And then not going 30 jumps. So if you die in something, hey, go refit. It's just next door. That's That's been a lot of fun too. Right. Well, just think too, from a game performance aspect too, people are not liking the larger battles, 300 versus 300 or more, just because of disconnects and black screens and whatever else is happening during that time. People, you know, uh, desyncing, that was a common issue also. So oh, yeah. you, don't, you don't have that stuff. It's like, oh, I can, I can do 50 on 50, no problem on just about any device. I don't need an Apple product. I don't need an iPad to run CTAs. You know, everybody will be able to yeah. manage a battle like that. 
Absolutely. And, you know, I get to turn my graphics up to ultra during a CTA and watch all the space explosions and stuff happening in full detail. And this game is gorgeous. But when I used to have to turn it down to potato settings just so I wouldn't black screen, I'm missing out on all the beauty this game has. I mean, this game is really a top notch mobile game. They have made this thing amazing. And when I couldn't look at it during the most exciting parts of the game, you know, big old, big old fleet fights. It's just a, like, a oh, bummer. You know, it's like going to the baseball game and being told that you got to wear, uh, you got to wear blinders just to watch <laughs> the game. Like, dang, you know, no, I can't zoom in on my pink maelstrom in a large battle CTA. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it, I mean, not having giant fights, I think, is also going to allow people to flex their um, their their doctrines and their metas. All these new changes coming up uh, means there isn't so much risk in trying something new if you don't necessarily have to stick with the entrenched doctrine. Right? It's so hard for a for a big group. To to change doctrines on a dime, where if you're a smaller group going out with your 10 friends or, or 50 alliance mates or whatnot, you get to try out whatever you like. I mean, I've seen, I've seen humpback, humpback fleets going out. You know, I've seen, uh, I've seen, I've seen armored cruiser doctrines happening just in the last couple of days. Uh, and, you know, with smaller groups, if Jen is going into smaller groups, they get to have that flexibility, that uh, to be agile, on their toes, try out some kitchen sink stuff, see if it works. Hey, you know, make scorpions great again is my new chant, and it's totally happening. You can totally try it out, and it works. Um, there's so much fun stuff to happen uh, if you're not just stuck with the 10,000-member doctrine that's very rigid. Yep, blue donut. Blue croissant. Blue donut. <laughs> <laughs> blue so, I mean, blue donuts, but always been the, always been the dirty word, even in Eve Online for almost twenty years now, right? Um, everybody wants to see the donut being broken into smaller, little bite-sized bits. You know, fun-sized Snickers instead of big blue donut. Um, and we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's things. Things are coming. You know, if 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 first Pantheon now Gen, who's next? Is it SHH? No. The uh, and I know there's there was that CEO meeting that was leaked from the Genesis the other day. Um, a lot of people have dissected this and all that, and uh, made fun of it, and you know they had their own opinions on it. But uh, you know, and other entities they have CEO meetings too, and so you know I, I happen to be in a CEO meeting. The the one that we had the other day was 11 minutes, and I told Zen if he said um six more times, I was going to leak the meeting. Uh, <laughs> I know it was just a joke, but he called me out on Alliance chat, so I was gonna run that on air chat, so I was gonna drop that. I did it'll happen. Oh, snap! He's typing, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I guess we'll see what's going on as far as uh, the Genesis War, what that has to come, and. What happens of it in the next week? It seems like a lot of stuff is happening really fast, especially in the last couple hours. And um, more, yeah, I'm, I'm just sure more stuff will come with that. And then also tomorrow, I'm a little bit excited, but at the same time, I'm kind of not. Is that that live stream that um, Eve Echoes is going to do, that roundtable. Yep. And so next week, we'll most likely be talking about that and dissecting it. I know all the other content creators are going to be there and are going to be dissecting that stuff too as to speculations and all that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we've got to uh, look forward to. And maybe we'll get a date as to when this industry update happens. And so uh, a lot of people are anticipating that as well. And pfft, they're expecting that. I mean, for the future of the game, you know, a lot of people are kind of banking on this to, to fix a lot of things. And I, I hope it fixes local eventually, but, um, <laughs> that's about, that's all every, I got. Every, every patch, every patch is guaranteed to break local. That's every time, every time, <laughs> every time they do an update. <laughs> All right, with that, I think that's everything on the agenda. Not really too much other stuff going on around New Eden right now. I mean, aside from the war stuff that's going on, you got citadels going down, POS is going down, ships getting destroyed. I mean, we got game content coming in, but 
I mean, that, that's just about it. MJD, yeah. hot drop in capitals on a couple frigates, you know, flexing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's doing that. That was just a joke. He's got a big ego, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I did see when I was when I was bopping McKenzie Station the other day. I think it was like twelve caps, uh, you know, dropped in maybe ten minutes before the Citadel was done, and uh, you know, all 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 five or six Gen folks were like, "Wow, hey, <laughs> we're important." Twelve caps, huh? <laughs> so, you know, hot drop them. That's what they're for, right? You know, a a, a capital uh, sitting in your hangar, spinning. And looking gray and boring uh, oh. ain't what it's for. Those right? were just the ones in that area, in that little cluster. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Roslyn, you got anything else to add? I think we'll uh, we'll close it out from there. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to when uh, Taylor gets to come back uh, next week and tell us all about the uh, shenanigans he's been getting up to. And, uh, and we'll, we'll be definitely looking forward to, to seeing him again. And... Uh, what kind of stories is going to bring us from uh, whatever adventures he's having. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, we didn't talk really too much shit about him, but uh, maybe in that, maybe another time. <laughs> when I was doing that show with him a couple of weeks ago, uh, oh, we talked shit about you so hard. Oh, I know. Oh, it, was, it was too much. Fun. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I was still mispronounced things purposely. Roselind. <laughs> is it Rosalind or Rosalind? I think I did that with uh, uh, Maldives the other day too. I think you're supposed to roll the R, like Rosalinda. Rosalind. <laughs> this this was a default name the uh, game gave me, so I don't even know what language it's in. Hey, yeah. maybe this is Russian. <laughs> Rosalind with an H somewhere in there. And and Let's for uh, Linwood's post in the on air chat, you have to talk with PM Blue. I asked PM Blue for a thirty billion loan. But um, there's an insane amount of interest on that, so I decided to not do that. I have enough. I have enough debt. I can't add any more to it. <laughs> now, if Lin was looking to uh, not easy you know, sell me his buddy to be my uh, to be my adopted son, uh, just let me know, and I'll I'll see if I can crank out a billion. Um, he's he's got a buddy that he says uh, swear looks just like he could be my kid. But, uh, you know, until the paternity test comes back, uh, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'd be lucky to make a billion a month. I, I don't remember the last time I had more than a bill in my wallet. Um, I'm always blowing it, buying stupid stuff. <laughs> I'm broke. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. So All right. We'll close it out from there. And as usual, we will give the shout out to all the other content creators out there. So Damon Zell, he likes to uh, spot the show at the end of his show. I greatly appreciate it. Damon Zell puts out a great show. He is one of the OG senior content creators. Go check out his videos every week, his community news and his game news. Uh, go check out Sky News, which is Rush's premier Eve Echoes news. And they do have uh, all their videos subtitled in English. And then also check out New Eden Radio. Rosalind, you're there. Alondria is there. Mackenzie is there doing radio shows every Sunday. Always tune into that for a great show. Also check out Ashieved YouTube. And uh, he does a bunch of good content out there. And then... Uh, the OG Captain Benzie. Shout out to Captain Benzie for creating some good content for uh, all the players in New Eden. And, uh, you know, Benzie, keep providing. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> feed, feed us that lower, my buddy. Yeah, he keeps a high standard. I enjoy it. So, anyway, take care, guys. Fly safe. And thank you, Rosalind, for uh, joining. Yeah, man. Keep it dangerous. Blast safe, 07.